What's up, man? Hello, John. It's good to see you. Fine. Hide and seek's over, Infinity. Hello. Tana. Hello, John. It's good to see you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Three Thumping. I'm Tony. In this video, I'm gonna show you how this master chief helmet built. I created this model in Blender, and you can see I put much details in the model. I also split the model into smaller pieces to fit those who have small 3D printers, like Ender 3. Alternatively, the complete model is of the two. If you have a big 3D printer, you could just print at one time and you don't have to glue all the pieces. I've got an Ender 3 printer, so I have to run multiple prints for this model. 3D printing takes time, so you'll need a good dose of patience to see it through. Before diving into this print, make sure you've got enough filament, probably two brand new spools. In my setup, I'm using a 0.4mm nozzle, 0.2mm layer head, with 3 watts and a 20% in fill. It looks pretty good. However, if there are any flaws in the print, it's not a big deal. I can use a solder iron to fix and send out any imperfections. Once all the parts are complete, it's time to bring everything together. Before using a super glue to secure the assembly, it's important to invert the locators. This step makes it easier to position the parts accurately. Apply a small amount of super glue to the contact surface, then carefully align the part and press it in. However, I personally choose to use a soldering iron and it worked very well for me. Use a soldering iron might leave some ugly scars on the model, but no worries, I was left on some failure and we are good to go. Simply repeat the process, invert locators and complete the assembly of the remaining parts. experimenting with using resin as a filler to smooth out any dents or uneven surfaces. It's the first time for me, so let's see how it pans out. Initially, I opt for the stick and dip method, applying a bit of resin and pushing it onto the joints. However, I soon discovered that using a brush worked like a charm compared to the stick. After applying the resin, a quick pass with the UV light is doing wonders. The resin cures in a few seconds. For those layer lines, just brush the resin on layer by layer until everything is covered. Once all imperfections are covered, I need to start sanding before you dive into sanding. Make sure to gear up with the desk mask and safety goggles. It's essential to work in a wild ventilated area. Lastly, bring your game patience. This step takes a bit of time, but it's worth it for top-notch finish. What you are seeing now is the result after I finished sanding. You might notice some large yellow areas. Those spots were later treated with a different filler. In those areas, I used the car body filler. I found that using only resin is effective for filling in smaller pits or layer lines but it struggles with large areas. Nevertheless, the results of the sanding are pretty good. I also took the time to sand some smaller parts. Once I attached these things to the helmet, 
I'll be ready to start priming. Attaching this small accessory to the helmet is quite straightforward. Using super glue and soda orange makes the process braze. I use a primer specially designed for automotive applications. Alternatively, you can go for the aerosol primer, depending on what's more convenient for you. During the spraying process, I found that a single layer couldn't fully hide the model's layer lines. It took at least three coats to achieve a more satisfactory result. After the first spray, I went back and sanded the model again before applying two more coats. This process yielded the final finish that met my expectations. After the undercoat dried, I proceeded to paint the entire helmet. However, my painting job wasn't done well. There were issues with woozing and uneven color. Despite this, I really don't want to repaint it, so I decided to stick with how it turned out. On the following day, I took a creative turn with a field paint job. I decided to craft a better damaged version by using a few tools to carefully scrape off sections of the paint. The intention was to give the helmet the rugged look of having a serious battle. However, I might have pushed too far, as it ended up looking more like an abandoned piece. Despite my initial disappointment, I wasn't willing to go through the hassle of repenting, so I simply embraced the outcome. I used transparent PETG filament for the visor, but the result didn't turn out as expected. If anyone knows how to improve transparency or achieve a more transparent print, please share your insights. There are four holes, each corresponding to an LED. Place the LEDs upside down, secure them in position with hot glue. and use a solar iron to connect the legs of two resistors, like this. Use a piece of wire to link the two negatives together. Repeating the process for the other set of LEDs. Finally, use a longer wire to connect the negatives. Now, grab the control unit and run a test. I've left three wires for the legs. The white one is ground, and the other two are positives. Sew the white one to the negative and connect the remaining tools to the positive sides of both sides of LEDs. Hello. Cortana. Hello, John. It's good to see you. Fine. Hide and seek's over, Infinity.
here in the visor, I have uh, connected the uh, uh, control unit and I'm going to put the visor to the helmet to the thing like this I placed the control unit on the right side and secured the position with the hot glue Lastly, I fit the head strap in the helmet You need a few 3D printed washers and 6 M3 screws The length of the head strap is adjustable so it will fit on a variety of people Make sure the joint is backward and fits the legs with washers and screws There are two do not need the washers Once you fix the head strap to it, you can put it on and adjust the length if needed Get a TF card ready You don't need a big capacity, I use an 8GB one Before use, you need to format the card to FAT32 Copy the MP3 folder to the memory card. If you wish to use your own audio files, you can replace the existing audio files by copying your audio files into the MP3 folder. To use this voice recognition module, you will first need to install the required library. Head to the official website, download the library, and install it on your Arduino. Once the library is installed, Locate the VR train symbol for voice training. In this example, I've changed the pins as they are also used in the helmet project. However, feel free to choose any pins you prefer. Click the upload button and wait a moment. When the message indicates that the upload is down, open the serial monitor and set the baud rate to 115200. Reset the Arduino Nano and you will see the corresponding instructions. You will be sending commands to train the module. I'm using the seek train command, which allows you to train the voice with a specific name. In this case, I will be training three voice records. Simply copy and paste the following into the serial monitor, changing the name as desired, like Halo. Hit enter, and you will train your first voice command. Halo. 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 Hello. When you say it's trained, that means your voice record has been successfully stored in the voice recognition module. So let's move on and train the next voice. Cortana. 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 Cortana 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 Fan Fan Once all records finished, we have to test. Let's use load 0, 1, 2. Hit enter. You can see load 3 successfully. Halo. Cortana. Fun. Halo. Cortana. Fun. Once all voice commands are functioning correctly, you can proceed to upload VR4 helmet onto the nanoboard. However, it is important to update three specific sections in the code with your own voice signature. These sections include the definition of your unique voice signature, the setup section, and the loop function. After replacing these three sections and ensuring you are prepared to upload, click the upload button and wait. Upon completion of the upload process, you will hear a startup sound from the speaker, indicating that the system has been initiated. At this point, you can simply invoke the train name to active the system. Cortana. Hello, John. It's good to see you. Fun. Hide and seek over infinity. Halo.
Kotana. Hello, John. It's good to see you. Hello. All right, that's all for the day. If you have any questions, please comment below. Give me a thumbs up, stand the bell along, then you won't miss out the next video. Share the video with your family and friends. I'm Tony. I will see you in the next video.